All right, guys, so I'm going to make a quick video on how to install ROS on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, more exactly, we're going to be installing ROS Connect on Ubuntu Mate, which will be running on a Raspberry Pi 2. So uh, if you use Indigo and you hear Connect and already are starting to look away, this is not bad. ROS Connect works um, basically just as well as ROS Indigo, unless you're an advanced user. So this is great. Uh, Ubuntu Mate is great. It's a lightweight version. Um, very, very similar to Ubuntu 14.04 as far as what you see and how it works. Um, and then we're using a Raspberry Pi 2 because it is the most compatible with ROS. Because ROS is why I have a Raspberry Pi. Um, and if you're going to have one of them, have the Pi 2. The Pi 1 um, is very difficult to get to work with ROS. I've been there. I do not advise it to anyone. And then the Pi 3, I have not owned, but it has bad reviews. So, I mean, it has bad reviews as far as being compatible with ROS, so I don't see any reason to have one of those for now. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to download Ubuntu Mate, so click this. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. When that downloads, you'll see in your download folder, um, you get this XZ, this image.xz file, which is your Ubuntu image compressed. Um, and if you're new to this, XZ means it's compressed, IMG means it's an image. Uh, this is for ARM processor, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's zipped and we need to unzip it. So this is essentially zipped. You're probably familiar with that. So you're going to right click it and you're going to use 7-zip, which may already be on your computer and you're going to extract here or wherever. Now, if you don't have 7-zip on your computer and you have something else, maybe WinZip or whatever else is out there as far as unzipping, this is the one you need. So you need 7-zip. You, you, those other ones aren't going to work for you. They, they probably aren't going to work for you as far as I know. So 7-zip is the one you want. So if you don't have it, just type in 7-zip in Google, 7-zip download, and you'll probably find this, 7-zip.org, um, and just download the corresponding one by clicking this hyperlink, whichever hyperlink. It, you may have a 64-bit Windows computer, so here you go. Click that. Um, and then you can, you'll unzip it and you'll end up with this, a nice disk image file, which will be 7.5 gigs. Um, so use a 16 gigabyte card. Do not use a 4 gigabyte. It won't work. Do not use an 8 gigabyte. You'll have no extra space. Use a 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte card, SD card. Okay, so now we're ready to put this on our card. To be clear, because um, this wasn't perfectly clear to me when I started. Nothing should be on your SD card. Before this image, when we're done with this, this image will be the only thing on our SD card. You don't need anything on there. So you, you're coming up to this with a blank SD card, and you're going to put an image on it, this file right here. So before we can do that, though, you can't just click and drag it onto your SD card. We need to format the SD card. And then we need to use a image writer to get this image onto the SD card. Uh, now, you may be familiar with right-clicking and formatting. Again, this, this way doesn't work either, just kind of like your default zipper didn't work. This formatter doesn't work for this. Um, so you'll need a new formatter, no big deal. We'll be using the, just type in SD card formatter. Um, and I happen to be using SD Formatter. You'll see this little symbol. That's a good one. So you click on it. SD Formatter version 4. Um, what you'll do is you'll select which drive your SD card is in. Make sure you do that correctly. If you select something other than your SD card, you're going to erase whatever it is. So it should be smart enough not, not to select your hard drive, but if it did, that'd be bad. So be very careful. Um, the default options are set OK, but just to show you, I'm doing a quick format. 
with no adjustment and then just click format and it'll say format successful and then your SD card is prepared then I'm ready to put this image on my card to do that I need a image writer so you probably don't have one so get this one go to sourceforge.net slash win32 disk imager and select this download it and it'll give you a nice little download executable um, my case I downloaded mine to a <laughs> I know I've been pointing at this as my SD card this is actually just a USB which is posing um, but when you download your disk imager it'll be a image writer file just like this you have all these internal files and here it is here's your executable win32 disk imager now instead of just double clicking it you're going to right click it and run as a administrator and this is your image writer so I need to make sure my SD card is selected as my device I will navigate to my uh, downloads folder with my uh, image and if it is truly a .img it'll show up and if it's not a true .img then it won't show up okay so here we go got my image file I'm ready to write it so I'm gonna push write and after five or ten minutes it'll say that it's done and then I'm ready to eject my uh, eject my SD card which make sure you do that don't just pull it out and then I can't show you these next steps um, but take the SD card out of your laptop and then put it into your Raspberry Pi 2 um, and then plug in your Raspberry Pi and it'll boot up and it should uh, prompt you to do some configurations just kind of like if you've installed Ubuntu 14.04 just like that uh, super easy GUI uh, easy to interface configuration no big deal one thing to point out which tripped me up for a couple of minutes um, for your first boot up upon completion of the first boot up setup Wi-Fi does not work at all so don't go in there trying to turn on your Wi-Fi the first time you've turned on it just doesn't work for whatever reason it's a bug so uh, once you finish your configuration just go to your restart which is in the top right um, and then reboot and then your Wi-Fi should work and to be clear um, obviously <laughs> this is Windows but you'll have a little Wi-Fi symbol in the top right uh, and you'll click on it and then you'll just select which Wi-Fi it is and you'll enter the, the uh, password so okay so that set up Ubuntu mate and hopefully you can get that running on your Raspberry Pi too then on your Raspberry Pi you'll pull up the internet and you'll go to this Ross page so this is just the Ross connect installation guide uh, if you're new you should probably read everything but I'll show you what's important and again the reason we're using connect is because of this it is compatible right out of the box with ARM processors so these are um, ideal this is good for a single board computer unlike indigo which is not quite as compatible all right so what do you need if you're new to this I'll just show you what you need so you'll need to copy and paste this into your command window so in Ubuntu mate you'll open up a new command window you'll copy and paste this into your command window and if you're super new <laughs> when you're copy and pasting you need to use control C to copy and control shift V to paste into your command window all right anyways um, run this line of code make sure you're connected to the internet before you run it so run this run this this is a key um, if the key doesn't work which I've run into sometimes it won't work so you might have to wait a day maybe the servers down or whatever um, or if you just can't get it Google you know uh, why is my setup key not working <laughs> or why is my key not working um, and there's actually other servers with keys on them so 
whatever, that line of code probably should work though. Um, and then run the sudo apt get update and it'll prompt you for your password. You'll type your password in. Okay, and then down here, it's not perfectly clear, but you only need to run one of these lines of code. I recommend this one, desktop install. So these are just three options. You can do a full installation, which is kind of your hefty installation, good for a desktop computer or laptop, full-fledged laptop. This is uh, your medium level install. It's got some good user interface stuff. Um, and then raw space, you know, is, as it says, is bare bones and probably isn't uh, as ideal if you're a uh, beginner to ROS. So if you're a user, then great, you know if you want it. But if you're new, I recommend this desktop install. It's the one I use. It's the one I know and am familiar with. <clears throat> um, so you ran that line of code. Now skipping everything else. Now we're here, initialize ROS dependencies. So I'm going to use uh, sudo ROS dep and then ROS step update, copy and paste each one of those. And then I need to source my bash file. Bash is just something that runs every time you open up a new terminal. So run the echo, run source, you know, um, and then you don't need to run this necessarily, this line. You, yeah, uh, don't need to run that. And then, but you do need, you should run this. This is just uh, a file that you might need someday or install. So once you get this, this, this page here may take an hour to get through. So don't do it if you got to go. All right. And then Ross tutorial. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to click on this. If you are a beginner, you must run, you must go through this. You're not done. <laughs> okay. So you need to, okay. So I'm, Step one, install raw. Step two, manage your environment. You don't need to worry about that first line there, any of that stuff. All right, here we are. Create a ROS workspace. This is what we need. So you're going to go through this process. You're going to make a directory, uh, and you'll have a workspace. So obviously, when you copy and paste, don't include these dollar signs. So just you can kind of blindly walk through here. Um, Catkin workspace is a generic name. You can plug in your name. I personally recommend using it, especially if you're a newbie, because you can easily copy and paste things off the web um, that use this name. Uh, so run these three lines, run these two lines, and then, yeah, run the rest of this. Run this, and then this bottom thing is just kind of a sanity check. So just run this echo ROS package path, and you should get something like this line here. And if you did, you're done. It worked. So uh, you can close out of your terminal, open up a new terminal, type ROS core at the top, so R-O-S-C-O-R-E, and it should initialize ROS, and if it does, you did it. All right, guys, you can just uh, comment below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.